everybody, I'm Lizzie. I'm Joe, we're from the band Hailstorm. And you're here with Premier Guitars, Big Five. What's my favorite guitar? Um, I have a lot of favorite guitars. I know, I have too many, but currently, we're about to start our album cycle, and uh, so I've been buying stage guitars, and my one of my favorites right now, it's one of these two, and I can't decide which one. But I'll go with the Explorer. Oh gosh. This I just got, like, within a month. It's Fire Mist. No, 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 this is, what is this one? Is it Metallic, Metallic. Fire Mist yes. Green? That's what it Metallic is. Metallic Fire Mist Green. It's a custom, it's on the back. I wanna know who named it. Custom that. Explorer, and I've got a thing for green guitars, especially if they're sparkly or shiny, and it's got the fattest neck, maybe one of the fattest necks I've ever played, and I love fat necks. It's resonant. Sounds amazing, and I'm just excited to get this on stage. Gibson does their mod shop every Wednesday, and this is one of the drops they did like a month ago. Got the mod stamped on the back, and I, I was, I had just been Googling green explorers because I've never really seen them around much, you know, and there's a few made in the 80s that I've seen for sale, but it, that was like that weird version of the Explorer with a different shape, and um, just haven't seen many around. Like the next day it popped up, I was like, oh damn. I was like, Lizzie, you're the Explorer queen. Do you want this? She's like, no, I was like, I'm I couldn't justify it. <laughs> I'm gonna get into it. The pickups, I'm actually switching out as soon as my guitar tech gets here. Uh, I'm gonna put in the um, the custom buckers, the Gibson custom buckers. I, I love those things. And, and th I think what's in here is the 498 and the 496, which are fine, but um, you know, I, custom buckers, I'm all about those. And I've been putting them in a bunch of my guitars. And so um, this is, uh, you know, Gold Top Explorer, but baritone. So this is what, this is basically, we don't, I don't think we go a show without me using this one. Oh no, you, yeah, you use that. Yeah, all, all over the place. I've, I've fallen in love with the baritones. Um, I also have a double neck SG that is standard on top, baritone on the bottom for some of our drop A. This is usually in drop B. I'm quite sure of what it is in now, but um, it's just a beast. It stays in tune. Yeah, we, we use so that good. all over the record. Yeah, it's we just, use this all over the record. Monster. Look at the back. It's pretty. I like I like these woody backs on yeah. on gold tops. You, you do like woody backs, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. But uh, one of these days, um, I might end up putting these in for production. But uh, this is just something from from our buddies at Gibson. Um, uh, they made you two of them. Yeah. There's a, there's only two. You know what? Let's. To be fair, I don't want to feel left out. Just show my other favorite one. <laughs> just real fast. Real fast. This is. I think they made this in 08, um, and it's, it is. Pure sparkle. It's the most sparkly guitar I've ever seen. Yes. Call it Sparkle Motion because Donnie Darko is a great movie. And it rips. That's all. By the way, that's a mean question because there's no one favorite guitar. Yeah. Come on. What's my Desert Island album? Oh that's my easy gosh. for me. Not easy. There'd be two, but I, I know which one I have to pick. Good. Uh, Tom Petty Wildflowers. It's never, I've never gotten sick of it. That's I've not, true. You know, I've never, every time I play it, I, it's, it's still gets me and I still love the shit out of it. It's been like 20 years now of me listening to it. I mm. can't get enough of it. God, there's so many albums that I love, uh, but I think the one that I would pick if I was stuck on a desert island uh, would be Jeff Buckley's Grace. Um, that was my other one. Is that was your other one? Ha, yeah. we should hang out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but only because every time I listen to it, I discover something new. And I feel like if you're on a desert island, you're not gonna wanna you know, have something that you can get sick of. Yeah. <laughs> Real easy, but um, just his voice and the guitar and this just the the juxtaposition of, of the two and and the um, the relationship that he has with the vocals versus the guitar is something that I'm absolutely and obviously interested in because I'm a singer as well. Um, but just the way he does it, it's just otherworldly. So it's I I'll never get tired of that album. My biggest guitar culture oh. pet peeve. I thought about this and it really it didn't take me that long to see, to mm -hmm. to think of something. Um, I I don't know why and it doesn't matter and who cares and I say more power to you honestly, but you know watching you know, the Instagram guitarists and and who am I to speak because I don't sit there and put myself out there like that because that's really hard to do and it takes balls putting up guitar videos every day. But there's always the faces that people are like, I feel like some people w work on their faces more oh, than yeah. their guitar playing. They're, they're faking their guitar faces. And it's just like, like, like that's cool. You're playing the part, but that's really, that's not the, like play the, feel it. It's not like. Yeah. That's not what actually is happening. That's not what your hands are communicating. 
<laughs> That's so true. <laughs> just like, I spent more time on your face than the guitar. And I'm just like, I don't know, man. Stop looking at me like that. God, stop uh, it. Mine's more simple. And and uh, again, I'm not knocking anybody because I, I have been, I have forgotten sometimes, but it's more. So there's, you have a live show, live guitar player, and he or she forgets to um, pull off the snark tuner. You guys oh. know what that is? We call it the robot nipple. The robot. I think Jason uh, Isbell said that. Robot really? Nipple. Oh, was it him? Somebody I, did. I thought that we invented that, but no. that's okay. Anyway, th- it's just such a, it, like you. I I understand you probably just forgot, but just, that has to be like on the list of things right before take, you go on stage. Take, take it off. Take, take it off. Take Nobody off. wants to see that. Terrible. <laughs> Which guitar hero of ours or mine would uh, would might shock some people or surprise some fans of ours and. I don't hear Mike Campbell brought up that much. And I know we all know how great he is and the things he's written, but I don't know if that's so much a shock because people know I love Tom Petty, but like uh, he's what he's like top two guitarist for me. If if not my favorite, just because, I mean, he just, he's got it, you know, the goods, but he doesn't sit there and he plays with space and bigness and, the bends are, you know, he's got a, I can tell when he, when he hits one, you know, to me, the bet, you know, hitting that octave bend on the beat, you know, like that's a signature. You, you, you can have David Gilmore, you know, anybody, you know who it is yeah. when they have their voice, you know, and Mike has a voice and not many people talk about him and I mean, people do, everyone knows he's legendary, but he's never on like the list, the top list. And that always yeah. blows my mind. I guess an odd one that is actually one of my guitar heroes, and again, doesn't really get talked about as a guitar hero, uh, is Neil Young, because you have to, it takes balls to just Wolf. just p- play one note <laughs> over and over again as a solo. You know, there's so many guitar players out there that just, they fill up a lot of space and, um, you know. Just, I feel like Neil, like, like he's talking. You know, well, that's the thing. It's, that out there, he's it, like, he's, he's having a conversation. That's why that one note, because it's saying things to and, you. And, and it's in, <laughs> and it's in real time. It's not necessarily, it doesn't sound like it was overthought or, or I've been working on this for months. It sounds like he's just doing that in the moment. And maybe that's how he recorded things, but it's just to decide to do that and to actually just like poke your brain in that way. And again, I think that there's a lot of overplaying that goes on, you know, and overthinking, and Guilty. so just in, in, uh, in, um, nothing wrong with that sometimes, but, um, but there's a, I don't know, it, it takes a certain, it's hard to be that simple sometimes. And so I, I admire him for that. So what's my secret weapon? I would say, I haven't really thought this through, but, <laughs> uh, you know, I think me and us as a band, one of, one of the things, it's not so secret, but we play live music together and what i mean is that that we um every every night we get on stage and we jump off the cliff and free fall you know there's no tracks or click tracks or anything and we do a lot of improv and to me that like just that my like that mindset of here we go how are we gonna land this and i don't know and it's 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 the most purest like living in the present, in the moment that I have ever experienced because you're in front of thousands of people and here we go. And yeah. it, it could be it could be a moment that like lasts forever. It could be a train wreck and that's and, up to uh, you. And it's so much fun. <laughs> it's so much fun to, you know, I'm addicted to that. It's an adrenaline rush and, and uh, you know, and I, and I think by being that excited about it, I think it gets other people excited in the crowd, you know, and I think it's a, creates a good energy and that it's something that not many hard rock bands are doing anymore. Agreed. So, so it, it's it's just fun, and it, to me, it's living. It's like living, breathing music. Like, what it, it's it's what it's we'll, all about. We'll and extend. I, <laughs> we'll, we'll extend. Uh, you know, the ending or uh, or the middle part or whatever. We'll we'll choose between whatever songs we're doing, and then we have to listen to each other. I'm listening to you. You're listening to me. Okay, you lead, I follow. I lead, you follow. And we have to figure out that communication. As a guitar player, my secret weapon is actually being a singer. I approach the guitar as a singer. Um, Part of what I do is try to write in that relationship between, okay, what is going to support my voice in the spaces that I'm not singing? What's going to answer that? 
what's the personality of the subject matter or the energy that I'm singing? Is the guitar playing matching that? You know, I and and really, I mean, to to almost a fault of mine, um, every riff or lead or something that I write usually is something that I can sing, and usually is something uh, melodic that I have rolling around in my head that I probably would have been doing as a vocalist, but I, I have this amazing instrument that is also extremely expressive. So I don't know, it's, it's just, that's how I approach it. Nice secret one, yeah. I like. Yeah, that's, that's what I got. <laughs> These are my people.